For days now, we've been talking about a big-time storm system that's expected to bring a major snow event to the north and severe weather down south. Today, we are focusing specifically on the severe weather and tornado side of things, which is expected to last for several days. If you guys do find this video helpful and you like weather related content, please consider subscribing to the channel with those post notifications turned on. Let's get down to business. First off, we are taking a look at our risk of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center for late tonight because we do expect some severe weather to initiate across the central and southern plains, and this is going to kick off our severe weather event. So we got a slight risk of severe weather from western Kansas down towards the Wichita Falls area in Texas, so this does expand south of the Red River vicinity here. Tornadoes are going to be possible. Matter of fact, that's one of our primary threats. We're probably going to see maybe two or three tornadoes across primarily this brown shaded region. Can't rule it out in this green region either across Oklahoma City as we get into early tomorrow morning. Damaging winds are also a pretty significant concern. And a few reports of large hail here and there also cannot be ruled out from the central high plains down into the southern plains vicinity. So let's talk about our severe weather threat. Uh, late tonight, we are going to be having a big time trough trying to make its way into the central United States here and what that's going to do is it's going to provide a lot of energy and a lot of wind shear across the plains it's also going to be bringing in a cold front and it's going to be bringing a lot of moisture northward. So as you guys can see here by late tonight, this would be around 1 a.m. in the morning, uh, we are going to have dew points in the 50s and low 40s across the central and southern plains, which if we were talking about like Dixie Alley, that's not a whole lot. But for this area, that's a lot for this time of the year. But you'll notice just behind it, we have some dew points in the 20s and 30s. So you see this big sharp cutoff here in western Texas. That's something called a dry line. And where those uh, moist air masses and dry air masses clash, that's how you get instability, and that's how you get big-time thunderstorms. So we are going to have that across the area as we get into late tonight. And let's take a look at our radar timeline here. This is 6 p.m. Central Time. We're going to have some storms trying to bubble up across parts of uh, Kansas and Nebraska on the northern side of our risk area. But I'm thinking it's going to be closer towards midnight that we see these storms firing up from southwestern Kansas and into the eastern Texas panhandle. These are the ones that I really think that we're going to have to watch for all severe weather hazards potential, including tornadoes. Uh, if, the, if these storms are able to utilize the ingredients that are in place, that strong wind shear, that instability along the dry line, they could become tornadic very quickly. But it's not going to last long. Just a couple of hours later, we're just seeing a big squall line trying to make its way into Oklahoma, which is going to lessen the tornado threat to some degree, but damaging winds will become the main concern. And as we get into late tonight and eventually early tomorrow morning, the storms will be trying to cross around the Red River and into central Oklahoma. So Oklahoma City, you will be feeling some storms early tomorrow morning, and they could be severe with maybe an isolated tornado threat. But as we get towards the 7 a.m. hour tomorrow, uh, these storms are going to be weakening, and that will start our next day of severe weather concern. Another thing that's really important to keep in mind for tonight's severe weather event is we have a very very strong low-level jet across the plains here, pretty much all the way up and down the plains. We have very, very strong low-level winds, and what that's going to do is it's going to be making the environment even more ripe for tornadoes because we have all that instability in the area as well. Interesting severe weather event for tonight. Tomorrow, the risk of severe weather likely gets even more substantial. We have an enhanced risk of severe weather from eastern Texas into northern Louisiana and southwestern Mississippi. That's on a scale of 1 to 5. That is a 3 out of 5. And uh, the threats here are going to be, again, all severe weather hazards. Tornadoes are very possible with even a 10% hatched area where significant tornadoes are going to be possible from eastern Texas into southwestern Mississippi. It's right across the enhanced risk region here. This is the primary area of concern for not only tornadoes, but strong tornadoes as well. Most of these are probably going to be in the squall line where we could be looking at tornadoes. But if we see any storms try to develop out ahead of the squall line, they will have the potential to produce one or two strong tornadoes. So we will have to watch that very closely during the day tomorrow. Damaging winds also a pretty substantial concern and hail is also going to be possible. So let's zoom into the southern U.S. to take a look at tomorrow. As we start tomorrow morning, we're going to have some storms trying to make their way into the Dallas-Fort Worth area down towards Austin, Texas, but those will be out of the area as we get into the early afternoon period tomorrow. 
And then stuff is going to get interesting as we get further along at the time. So here's around 4 or 5 p.m., roughly, give or take, because this isn't exactly what the radar is going to look like. And at that point, stuff gets concerning. Uh, we have widespread thunderstorms trying to rapidly develop out ahead of the cold front and the main line across eastern Texas and into Louisiana. If we did see a scenario like this, several tornadoes would be likely, and at least a couple of those could be on the strong end of things, which is EF2 or greater. So we really have to keep an eye on this. We have a lot of instability in the area where you can see these brighter colors on the screen. Notice just how sharp it cuts off in eastern Texas and into northwestern Louisiana. That's the cold front right there. That's where the main line of storms is located, and it's eating up all the instability behind it. But right out ahead, we got a lot to work with. On top of that, the low-level winds are very strong, and the deep layer winds are also very strong, and they're veering in direction with height, which means that you have strong wind shear. That, on top of the instability, is going to make the conditions favorable for tornadoes if these storms try to utilize them, and they'll have a better chance of doing so if they are ahead of the cold front and are discrete, which means that they're separated a little bit. That threat continues as we head into the late afternoon and evening hours tomorrow. As we get after dark, we're still going to have some strong to severe thunderstorms from Memphis all the way down into southwestern Mississippi here. That threat continuing all throughout the overnight tomorrow and eventually into early Wednesday morning. Severe weather, including damaging winds and a few tornadoes, will remain possible across the Gulf Coast on Wednesday, and that threat continues on Thursday as well across the southeast, even all the way down into southwestern Florida. Another thing that to consider on top of all the severe weather is the rainfall and the flooding concern. Up into Saturday morning, so this is the rain expected over the course of the next five days, we are going to have widespread heavy rain across the southeast and into the Tennessee Valley region here. Uh, these pink shades are looking at about an inch or two of rainfall. These reds you're looking at about two to four inches of rainfall. And look at how widespread that is from Louisiana into Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, Tennessee, all those areas there. You're looking at some very high rainfall totals. And where we see totals like that, especially with storms training over the same area, it could lead to some pretty significant flooding concerns. So that will also be a problem at the very least over the course of the next few days across the southeast. So guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it and want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe to the channel with those post notifications turned on. And also consider dropping a like on the video if you guys want to get the message out to other people as well. But until the next video or live stream, stay safe and I will talk to you guys back here next time.